How often might there be other people like us? Uh, I mean, you hear the chosen race um, in, in the Bible. Well, are we a chosen race? Uh, you see, a long, long time ago, it was thought that we were it, that our Earth was the center of the universe, that the planets went around the Earth, and so on. We were special. Then we discovered that there were thousands of stars and a universe with thousands and myriads of galaxies. And we got this sort of principle of meri meritocracy, uh, medi sorry, mediocrity, the opposite, that we're nothing special, that the universe will be teeming with intelligent life. In fact, Carl Sagan, you might have heard of 40 years ago, used to think that uh, there might be a million advanced civilizations in our Milky Way galaxy. I think things have changed. I just want to take you through a calculation I did just last week as I was preparing this lecture. There's a very famous equation called the Drake equation, which I've actually modified. I'm not going to call it the Morrison equation, but it actually knocks out one term from the Drake equation. It adds another term which is relevant to our current understanding of solar systems. This looks horrible. N is that, sorry, that was not meant to happen. Press the wrong button there. N here on the left. That's the number of other civilizations that might exist in our galaxy at the present time. R is the rate of star formation, and these are parameters that actually indicate how likely it is various things will happen. So we'll go through them. It's quite easy, step by step. I'm going to start. I want to find out how often a civilization might arise, on average, in our galaxy. How often something like our own civilization might happen. We start with the number of stars born per year in the Milky Way. Even though there are 100,000 million year stars in our galaxy, the number produced per year of new stars is only seven. I find that amazing. It's very small. So that's something we know. It's about the only thing we do know. Actually, there's one or two more things we know a bit. So we have seven. The number of stars per year is seven. But you see, not all of those stars will work. Some stars are too hot, and they burn up their fuel so quickly, they don't live long enough for life to evolve. Other stars are too cool. You can't get near enough to be warm enough. It turns out that most stars are not suitable. And only about 20% stars, similar, of course, to our sun, because we know that's right, are suitable. So can you see, of those seven stars a year, perhaps one of them, typically, would be suitable in terms of its longevity and its heat. So we've reduced the number. So one suitable star might arise every five years. What fraction of those have got planets? Well, we don't yet know, but we're obviously beginning to discover planets. In fact, we're not really discovering as many as we thought we would, but I think that's because uh, it's quite hard to discover planets, and the techniques haven't quite got right. I think there'll be a lot, lot of planets to be discovered in the future. As time goes by, we'll discover many more. And my gut feeling is that probably 10% of all stars will have planetary systems. So I'm making a factor there of 1 in 10. So can you see, if we had one suitable star every five years, we'd have one star with a planetary system every 50 years. Do you see how I'm increasing the time? So we carry on doing that. Now, this is a new one. The fraction of stars with terrestrial planets, like our own. Well, we've discovered an awful lot of very massive planets, more massive than Jupiter, very close to their sun. We don't believe they can be formed there. We believe they must be formed roughly out where Jupiter is, which means they work their way in towards their sun. In doing so, they would throw out into space any terrestrial-type planets. So that's a slight worry. So I've got a fraction, which is the number of solar systems which will have terrestrial planets, like our own Mars, Earth, Venus. And I've put a factor in there for one-tenth. I don't know the answer, but that's probably of order right. So these are things we sort of vaguely know of. How many of those planets, if you've got some terrestrial planets, will be in a habitable zone? Well, in our case, there's one. Seems quite a good example, so I've put one there. That's great. Doesn't affect things. The fraction of habitable planets where life arises. Now, of course, we don't know. What we do know, though, is that life arose here on planet Earth 
virtually the instant the earth could support life. So if it can happen easily here, there's no real reason why it can't happen easily elsewhere if the conditions are right. So I'm going to be optimistic, and I'm going to say that everywhere where life could arise, it will. And so I've got another factor of one. Do you see where we're going? Okay, now, this is the real clincher, and it's the thing we really don't know. How often will simple life that arose so easily, apparently, on the Earth, develop, evolve into advanced, intelligent life like us? 